Hello, everybody. Today we are diving into the exciting early history of performance art and video art. As a review from the last lecture, we explored the timeline for early cinema, from the Edison Manufacturing Company's kinetoscope to the rise of 16 millimeter film. We described two potential pathways for approaching film embodied in the poetic films of Gregory Markopoulos and the repetitive work of Andy Warhol. And finally, we discussed the importance of the French new wave artist Jean-Luc Godard. We begin our lecture today by taking a look at the 1960s, a decade that saw the Vietnam War, the civil rights protests, as well as the assassinations of President John F. Kennedy and Martin Luther King. Punctuated by these dramatic events, the decade ended on a high note with a man on the moon. On August 28, 1963, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered one of his most impassioned and memorable speeches to an audience of 250,000 people. Speaking in front of the Lincoln Memorial, King set aside his prepared notes describing his vision of a nation that will, quote, rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, end quote. Later this year, King was named Times Person of the Year. Then the following year, on July 2nd, the Civil Rights Act was passed. The legislation outlawed discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. During the 1960s, the Vietnam War continued, dividing the United States along the way. And as I mentioned, we landed on the moon. The first human-made object to touch the moon was the Soviet Union's Luna 2 on the 13th of September in 1959. Then the next year, the United States' Apollo 11 with its crew landed on the moon on July 20th, 1969. Unrest and technological innovations are two of the defining features of the 1960s, and we see these trends in the art world as well. Nikita Samphal's shooting picture from 1961 symbolizes the violence of this era, while other artists like Robert Rauschenberg embraced emerging technology as we see in this still of the performance Open Score from 1966, a work we will return to later in this lecture. As we have seen in previous lectures, performance is an open-ended form. Fluxus happenings like this one, orchestrated by Alan Caprow, could take place anywhere with anyone. In many cases, the documentation of these performances and happenings have been integral to preserving the work since the format itself was transient. The images or films we have of these events are the only way we can remember them, as no material object exists in many cases. This lecture will focus on how video and film were used alongside performance in various contexts. We will start by looking at the work of the American artist Bob Rauschenberg. Rauschenberg experimented throughout his career as an artist and was a very early proponent of weaving art and technology together. In 1960, Rauschenberg met Billy Kluver, an electronic engineer who was involved, along with others, in the creation of Jean Tingley's self-destroying machine, Homage à New York, 1960, seen here. In 1965, Kluver worked with John Cage and Merce Cunningham on Variations 5, involving a sound system that re reacted to movements, sounds, and projections, creating a complicated score for dancers. Then the following year, Rauschenberg was invited to participate in the Stockholm Festival of Art and Technology in the summer. Rauschenberg collaborated with Merce Cunningham, John Cage, Lucinda Childs, and Deborah Hay on the performance of Nine Evenings, which took place in the 69th Regiment Army Building in New York's East Side. In the work Open Score, 500 volunteers gathered on a dark set that was recorded by infrared cameras and projected onto three large screens. The people on stage were performing simple gestures in the dark. There was also a projection of people playing tennis with radio transmitting rackets. When the lights were turned on, the audience saw an empty stage. 
This slide shows ephemera from the performance as well as a still from the tennis game. Please watch the short video linked on the bottom of this slide. And on this slide, there is a link to another one of Rauschenberg's, Rauschenberg's video called Linoleum. Rauschenberg wore a plastic suit wired for sound by Kluver and projected a film where he made, <clears throat> excuse me, projected a film he made from found footage of recreational water sports and military aircraft maneuvers. A natural collaborator, Rauschenberg founded EAT, Experiments in Art and Technology, with Kluver in 1967. Together they continued to collaborate and experiment. Alongside scores of other artists, dancers, choreographers such as Trisha Brown, Deborah Hay, Steve Paxton, and Lucinda Childs. On this slide, we are viewing a, a still from one of Robert Whitman's films. Whitman began his career as a painter, but moved into video experiments such as Prune Flat from 1965, which featured live performers interacting with filmed images, sometimes of themselves. Please watch the video linked on this page. Now let's take a closer look at another familiar name from contemporary art history, Carolee Schneeman. Schneeman, originally a painter, created Eye Body in 1963. Eye Body predated other works by Schneeman and other body artists. From the work's photographic documentation, we see that Schneeman used her body as the primary vehicle for expression in this performance. By the 1970s, her performances were at the intersection of culture, the human, the female body, and its meaning. Interior Scroll was an exceptionally haunting performance that involved Schneeman slowly extracting a scroll from her vagina, from which she read as the text became available. The text itself was about a confrontation with a male filmmaker. She explained, quote, I thought of a vagina in many ways, physically, conceptually, as a sculptural form, an architectural referent, the source of sacred knowledge, ecstasy, birth passage, transformation. Here again, the photographic documentation of this performance allows contemporary viewers to understand how visceral the experience of encountering this work in person may have been. Schneeman was an ardent feminist, and she also opposed the Vietnam War, a view that was common among many artists at this time. She expressed these views in her video, Snows, stills from which are seen here. Quote, Snows was built out of my anger, outrage, fury, and sorrow for the Vietnamese. The performance contained five films whose related content triggered juxtaposition of a winter environment and the Vietnam atrocity images, end quote. Schneeman said. Finally, let's take a look at the work of another American artist, Joan Jonas. Jonas began working with performance in the 1960s and continues to work in this way today. Unlike the other two artists we have seen today, Rauschenberg and Schneeman, video and performance were integrated together from Jonas's very earliest performances. She bought her own Sony Portapak in 1970. She said, this device enabled me to add another reflection and to relate to the audience through the close-up on the live transmission, closed-circuit video system. The monitor is an ongoing mirror. As a graduate student, she participated in a dance workshop with the Judson Church Group, which included Trisha Brown, Deborah Hay, Steve Paxson, and Yvonne Renier. In 1972, she made a performative video that was based on an alter ego named Organic Honey, seen here. She created a room out of Organic Honey's imagination and a video to accompany this metaphysical journey. Two years later, she worked on Funnel, Three performance areas were separated by curtains in which Jonas performed rituals from the traditions of Native Americans, particularly from the Southwest. The 1980s were not a particularly productive decade for Jonas, but she released Volcano Saga in 1987. The work was originally performed live, but Jonas later translated it to video. It was based on an Icelandic poem from the 13th century. 
Please watch a clip from this film linked on this page. The story is about a young woman, played by the actress Tilda Swinton in the video, whose prophetic dreams match the otherworldly scenery of Iceland. In this lecture, we have seen how the political unrest and turbulence of the 1960s led to many advances in technology. Artists mirrored the concerns of the decade, decade from the women's movement, the Vietnam War, the civil rights movement, among other issues in the zeitgeist. We looked at the work of three artists whose works incorporated video alongside their performances. Robert Rauschenberg collaborated with engineers, dancers, choreographers, and other artists making works that combine technology in new ways. Originally trained as a painter, Carol Lee Schneeman embraced film photography to document her body and also made videos. And lastly, Joan Jonas worked in video from the beginning of her career and continues to use video even today. Thanks for watching this presentation, and please don't forget to watch all of the linked content. See you soon, everybody!